All right, first things first, Iran is putting Israel's already overburdened air defense systems to the ultimate test. Tehran has initiated hundreds of missiles and drone strikes on targets across Israel. Will the Israeli air defense system be able to fend off these attacks? Here's a closer look at the multi-layered air defense system. Israel has developed the Arrow system with the U.S. Interestingly, the system operates outside the atmosphere. It is designed to intercept long-range missiles, including the types of ballistic missiles Iran said that it launched. This system has also been used in the current war to intercept long-range missiles launched by Houthi militants in Yemen. Israel has also developed the David Sling air defense system with the United States. It's meant to intercept medium-range missiles such as those possessed by the Hezbollah in Lebanon. The American-made Patriot is the oldest member of Israel's missile defense system. It was first put into use during the first Gulf War in 1991 to intercept Scud missiles fired by Iraq's leader at the time, Saddam Hussein. The Patriot is now used to shoot down aircraft, including drones. Let's talk about the Iron Dome as well. Israel's Iron Dome system has also been developed with the United States. Backing it specializes a shooting down short-range rockets. The Iron Dome it has intercepted thousands of rockets since it was activated early last decade. This includes thousands of interceptions during the current war against Hamas and Hezbollah. Israel claims it has a success rate of over 90%. Israel is also developing a new iron beam system to intercept incoming threats with laser technology. Israel claims this system will be a game changer because it is much cheaper to operate than the existing systems that it has in its arsenal. However, Israel's cost-effective iron beam system, that is not operational yet. So that is where things stand on that front. Now to discuss the situation, we are now being joined by Dr. Adna Cohen, Professor for Non-Proliferation and Terrorism Studies at Millbury Institute. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, sir. Now, sir, I want to start by asking you, Iran says that it has successfully launched retaliatory strikes, but how <coughs> successful do you think these were, given that, as per some reports, Israel says that it intercepted about 90% of the drones and missiles that were launched towards it, as well as the United States reporting interceptions as well. So what's your assessment of Iran's strikes on Israel? It was a miserable failure in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. Miserable failure. Uh, the Israeli rate of success is apparently even higher than what the Israeli expected. 99% mm -hmm. of the entire fleet of over 330 objects, that means drones, that means cruise missiles, that means ballistic missiles, have intercepted outside Israeli, uh, did not fail, did not reach Israeli soil. Uh, that means that only about three interballistic missiles fell and made limited damage, moderate damage on the base. Nobody was hurt. The military air base was not, uh, was not out of uh, use. It was a very limited damage. It was a miserable failure given the extent of the Iranian effort. And it was incredible success for the full, for two things. One is the full uh, alliance, the full coalition that was involved that goes beyond just Israel. Hmm. It was the United States, the United Kingdom, and uh, several local countries, including Jordan, including the Emirates, and possibly others. And the fact that the Israeli Air Force, that was the main partner of that of that coalition, was able to perform and was able to shoot down uh, most of those objects outside Israeli skies. In other words, before they even penetrate Israeli skies. All right. So it was a great Israeli success, miserable Iranian failure. All right, sir. But that being said, even though it may not have inflicted the sort of damage that Iran was hoping to inflict on Israel, that being said, it is symbolic nonetheless. Do you think that the Allies' efforts, the coalition that you talk about, do you think efforts to de-escalate tensions in the region, West Asia, of course, have proven to be inefficient? Well, I hope that that would be enough. I think that the given that success, uh, I hope that Israel would not take any additional uh, kinetic action. Uh, I think the Israeli success was so far so 
uh, impressive and so exceptional. So I hope that there would not that Israel would decide that there is no need uh, mm. to continue with that and to retaliate, which could lead to escalations. It's unclear what would happen. But I hope that that success would end that things and it would help to the survival of that coalition. That coalition is not that trivial. It's country that used to be, you know, decades ago, enemies of Israel. Mm. Essentially, it's a coalition of Sunnite states and Israel headed by the United States and uh, to a degree, the, the UK as well, that essentially that... Uh, uh, back up and uh, reverse the Iranian aggression. Uh, that's quite remarkable, and I hope that that would be enough to de-escalate uh, what is uh, expected in the next few days. Uh, Dr. Cohen, interesting that you say that because in fact I was just going to talk to you about Israel's response which is awaited. You say that you hope that this is enough, the fact that they were in able to intercept and the Iron Dome perform the way that it did. That being said, how do you see the situation moving forward? As we know, Iran has put out a statement. It's tried to justify its retaliatory strikes. That's what it calls it. How do you see the things moving forward in this region? I know the United States put a very strong pressure on Israel not to escalate further, especially given the success. Hmm. I think also that's the view of the other members of that coalition, in particular the local partners, Jordan, the Emirates, and others. Uh, I think the survival of that coalition, which was it was its first test, is so much important. And I think that Israeli deterrence has already showed itself. So I think that there is no need uh, for further actions. It is true that prior to this operation, when the first news about the Iranian attack Israel kind of promised to retaliate in addition to no matter what. Uh, I hope, and given the U.S. pressure, including the conversation, the 25 minutes conversation between President Biden and um, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, just earlier, um, a few hours ago, I think that Israel would take the wise conclusion and would decide for now not to continue with any kinetic uh, activities. All right. Uh, they can do cyber things or other possibilities. All right. Well, Dr. Kohn, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights on this. My pleasure. Thank you. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.